today on Divorce Court. I want my husband to make a decision of who he's going to defend in our marriage, if it's going to be me or is he going to defend his family. My family members have caused a lot of issues within my marriage, and that's something that we need to fix. I grew up in foster care. I ran away when I was 15, and then I was homeless from 15 to 18, so I have to look after me before I look after someone else. I admit I have lied in the past, but it's time to leave the past in the past. We have a really open relationship when it comes to communication, so when he lies, it really makes me feel Feel, like really disrespected. Why lie? You could just tell me the truth and then we can work through it. But now we have to work through the truth and we have to work through why are you lying. So if you lied about a bill, don't just say sorry and think it's over. I need to understand why you lied about that. We need to fix that problem. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Carlos Dillard and Chris Dillard. The two of you have been together for seven years, married for the last three, but you are in trouble, so you have come to me. Mr. Dillard and Mr. Dillard, do you mind if I call you Carlos and Chris, because I, otherwise I'll just get confused. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay? Uh, Carlos, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your marriage and why we're here today? Awesome, Your Honor. So, like I said, you, we've been together for seven years, um, and overall, I love this man, but we have, a, we have a side chick problem, and it's not a person I can fight. Uh, it's a family member, um, and they, they literally, like, by every as aspect of side chick, we pay for bills, we pay electricity, we pay for car payments, we pay for back to school shopping, um, and I can't fight them, because if it was a regular fight, side chick, I, you know, I'm at the door. Right. Um, but this one, I can't. So it's, it's a family member of his, and I've talked to him over and over and over about it. And it's, an effect, it's affecting our marriage. Um, Give me everything. an example of some outrageous economic demand or request this side chick has had. So um, we purchased two cars for this, uh, this family member, actually. Chris purchased the first one in college on, him, on his own when we were dating. After we got like serious, uh, we, we gave them a car and just asked them to just pay for the payments and the insurance. But after you pay for it, it's all yours. No down payment, no mm -hmm. nothing. And we had already paid for half the car. Um, ever since then, we, they've asked us to pay for electricity. And all along, my family, my, like, my parents are poor. My parents live on the street, so, and I don't even help them. So it's really hard for me just to give up all my money to your certain family members when I don't even do it for my certain family members. Now, Chris, what's well, going on with this, this family member? <laughs> well, I will admit, Your Honor, that that has happened. However, this particular family member, um, from growing up with them, I was looking at it from a child's point of view, so I saw that they were never given the chance. Mm -hmm. And so as an adult, I saw myself as able to give them that chance they were never given mm -hmm. and started working pretty much at 14 years old. Started giving them 25% of my paycheck pretty much every time I got paid. Mm -hmm. um, my family member ended up needing a new car, so I took out a student loan and bought this family member a um, car. I met at any point, Without him saying anything, did you start to feel used at all, or...? Um, the story didn't always make sense. It was like, it's just too good to be true. Like, that really happened. How long did you know that and continue to support that? I would say that I knew it from the get. However, like I said, this person wasn't given a chance when I was younger, which I thought. But as I got older and started talking with adult family members as an adult and started talking with Carlos more and actually believing what he was saying, but the I... Prop... Oops, sorry, not to cut you off, Your Honor, but what he's forgetting to let you know. <laughs> However, <laughs> I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to let you do it, Mr. Mr. I'm going to let you do it, Carlos, but, but no more. He, oh, I'm so sorry, but what he keeps saying, he's admitting and saying, like, oh, yeah, I know, but he lied about it. He lied mm -hmm. about the whole thing. I asked him for months. Like he said, he knew from the beginning. You just asked right, him. Right, right. He lied to me about the whole thing. He told me that we, we, they're not, we paying all the bills on time. Because with the bills, paying the money is one thing. But when you're actually not paying for the actual bill and then yeah. the creditors are looking for you, that's a whole different thing. Do you still deal with this person at all? I actually cut them out of my life. Um, Money and emotions don't belong in the same room. They, 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 they really, really don't. And you, you, you've, you've, got to, you've got to marshal your money, especially when you're married. Your obligation is to him and nobody else. Financially, you know what I'm saying? I mean, unless you have kids or something. You with me on yeah, that one? Yeah, I'm with you. You can't lie to him about somebody else. Shoot, when I was 15, my sister never had no money. I used to charge her uh, interest. <laughs> uh, I ain't saying that was right, but money is money, is money and feelings are feelings. Too... Yeah, that sounds terrible. Speaking of... Uh, Carlos, why don't you tell me what else is going wrong at your house? Um, speaking of, like you said, 15, I've been on my own since I was 15. I was a foster child. I grew up 
put myself through high school, put myself through college. So when he says this, like you said, grow, like grow, I've been grown since I was 14 years old. I've been in foster care since I was 10, so I had to grow up real fast. So that's a, also another issue with our marriage is his immaturity. He, he does these little lies. Where I'll, like, and it always goes back to either something financial or just something super simple. Like, did you walk the dogs? Oh, yeah, 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 I walked the dogs. Next thing I know, the dogs have pooped on my brand new carpet. I thought you walked the dogs. Oh, yeah, I must have forgot. How you just must have forgot when you just said 10 minutes ago that you walked the dogs? Did you pay the electricity bill? Oh, yeah, 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 I paid the electricity bill. Two days later, I'm at the electricity office begging them to turn it back on. So, like, <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will admit that that stuff happened in the past, so I try to keep it in the past. Um, like with electricity, that was that was a few years ago. Um, with the dogs, that was a few weeks ago. But uh, the electricity. <laughs> but um, he, he's just not financially responsible. Yeah, and I will, I'm not saying I will he don't make that. money. He makes he this man makes a whole lot, a of, lot money. of money. He just doesn't. He just don't know right? how to. I gotta take credit with. cards from. I literally I give him allowance. You get paid, here's your $200 a week, don't spend it all in one place. And I I'm getting tired of doing that, because I'm a grown, I got my own things I need it's, to do too. Christy, I'm gonna give you something, <laughs> I'm gonna give you an opportunity to say something about that, and then I wanna talk about Carlos's temper. Okay. Do, do, do you see the concerns that he has with respect to you being cavalier about your obligations? Yes, I see them. Um, before, it was more so that I wasn't, I, I, I cared, but, at the same time, I was like, well, we have the money. You know what you're doing with right. it. So here, take the money. You go do what you need I to do, you. and then I'm just going to go I over here you. and chill. So, so now I want to move on and talk about Carlos's temper. He said, oh, he said a couple vulgar words, and it was like, I ain't got to deal with you no more. And he got out of the vehicle. I didn't tell him he got out of the vehicle. He, so once you got on out, I just drove away. I didn't know your foot was under the car. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you say Carlos has a bad temper. Tell me what you mean. He will take stuff from zero to 100 real quick. Mm -hmm. That doesn't always need 100% of anger to deal with. Um, like, Give me an example. Well, one time I lost my job, um, and then his reaction, first reaction was to go fight the guy and go and yell at the guy. And I was like, you know, we, 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 we can't do that because I'm trying to get unemployment and then he can use that against me. So I do try to think of stuff more logically um, and just try to figure out a better um, plan of action to take than just mm -hmm. going and first thing is do, just go Give me and, an another example of his anger. Another example is we had an argument in the car one time on the way back from the movies um, and I got out of the car to just walk home and the light turned and then he didn't see me on the side of the car and ended up hitting my ankle. And that hurt pretty bad. And so we talked about that. And it was like, you know, we have to just learn how to control our emotions more. Because mm -hmm. I do have an anger problem as well, but I think that I can control mine a little bit more right. when it comes to certain things than um, Carlos can. Carlos, what's, what's your response to that contention? People who live the life that I lived are usually in debt or behind bars. So the fact that I'm married and successful and the only issue that I have is an anger problem, I'm okay with that because I've been through a whole lot. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, so live with it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm a little hot-headed. Like, suck I'm a it little, up. But it's not, it's not anger. I call it passion. Mm -hmm. Like for the examples that he gave, he forget to tell you that he's been having problems with that boss and for the last six months before he said got fired, I was like, you should be looking for another job. You should be looking for another, because once you lose your job, it's gonna be all on me. So he forgets to tell you that part. So yes, when he came home, oh, I lost my job. Yes, I wanna go fight because I told you that you're gonna lose your job and then you did nothing to, to, to be looking for a new job now, you know, or in the time that you knew that you were having a rocky situation. So. I didn't see that as being outlandish or un unapproachable. I saw, I was like, bro, I already told you that you're gonna lose your right, job. Right, right, so but why didn't you handle your business? Why didn't you handle your business? So yeah, I did come off, I do come off, because yeah. I think about it. I think about things in ahead of the time, and then, and I feel like I, I've been married to him for so long, he should, his brain should work like mine, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> himself. Do you think Chris has a bad temper? Chris ain't got no temper. That's the problem. Uh, <laughs> I, explain I, explain I do, how uh, that's a problem. Perfect example. You lost your job. Mm -hmm, I'll get another one. Just so nonchalant. Mm -hmm. and in my mind, I'm like, oh, we gotta, we gotta get food stamps. We gotta get unemployment. <laughs> like, we, who's gonna pay for this bin sitting in the garage? Like, and then like, it falls. He's very, he's very, but then, 
something little could take him, and then he just explodes. And then give and me then an I, example of something little that made him explode. Okay, so perfect example: the whole when I ran over his ankle with the car. <laughs> <laughs> That's little. That's not a little thing, is it? But <laughs> the, the situation that me, that led to that was we, like he said, we was at a movie. And I didn't like the way he was talking to me. So I was like, you need to watch the way you talk, like, who you talking to. And he feels like whenever I disrespect him, when I, especially when he's making a lot of the money, mm -hmm. he feels like I should just, like, do what he says. And I was like, no. And then that, that little thing of me saying, shut up, I, that was, I said, shut up. And he blew it all. Usually, he's just real quiet. What oh, did I don't he say? Care. He said, oh, he said a couple vulgar words, and it was like, I ain't gotta deal with you no more. And he got out of the vehicle. I didn't tell him to get out of the vehicle. So once you got on out, I just drove away. I didn't know your foot was under the car. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, do you care to I address that? I will say that, that um, with that, uh, this happened in May. My grandmother died in May, so that's a bad month for me, where I just don't register my emotions, um, really, and then I just take everything to heart. Y'all, that's another pr excuse. That's an excuse. Hey, hang on. Let, it let, is let. an excuse, but it's something that really happened that really affected me because my uh, grandmother was the closest person to me as far as family goes. And so it really bothers me in May where she, uh, when she died and then around her death day is when I'll have like a lot of emotions that mm -hmm. build up and then I'll just lash out at Carlos mm -hmm. um, just for a little stuff that he'll do or a little stuff that I'll do. I'll just get upset with him and take it out on him. And when that happens, Your Honor, he, I'm, you're talking to a man who don't even, he's, he doesn't say nothing. So when I get that reaction from him, it's really dramatic because that's not who he is. So when he comes after me, I have to feel like I have to come back 10 times harder. Gotcha. Which means we come back 10 times harder. I gotcha, I gotcha. I wanna know why he's not allowed to Snapchat. And you cannot drive that car again. That's his problem. I'm speaking of rental cars as in like another person. Oh, it's okay. a good reference. Thank you, because I, I was you, so you look, kind of you look kind of lost. I didn't know what was going <laughs> on. But, but now that and you I know, I was trying to look at Joe, <laughs> and I didn't know. Would you resent your partner financially supporting an adult family member? Tell us what you think at Facebook.com/slash Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Carlos, you say you do not allow Chris to Snapchat. Please tell me why. Well, if you know what Snapchat is. I do. You know it disappears. <laughs> huh? It disappears once you send the message or the picture. So I need something, like if you're gonna use a social media, it needs to be something that I can read through. I don't trust the whole send a picture, send a message, it disappears type mm -hmm. thing. Cause that, why you need a Snapchat? You could just put it on a regular text message, Do you right? distrust him for any reason? Yes, I do. I, because, and we've had, um, trust issues in the past on social media where he's talked to people on social media before. And for me, I don't, I'd rather you cheat on me sexually with someone than you have a relationship mm -hmm. and like spend our financial money. Like if I catch you going out on dates, driving, going on trips and stuff, that's gonna be a problem. Did he do that? I didn't uh, do that. Uh, well, no, but she was talking about it and the text messages and the, and the, okay, and the, and the little messages. Okay, I was talking about like meeting up, but when I said meet up, I meant as a group with Carlos included, but as, but if here's you my read, problem, Your Honor. If we you said, read the, well, let me finish. Okay, go ahead. If you read the message, it does seem like I'm flirting with the person, which I have been, I have flirted in the past, I will admit that, but I never took it as far as doing anything physical or going to meet anybody. It was more so just for conversation because I felt I was um, not being paid attention to, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, do you fail, do you see one of your major problems as being a failure to communicate? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's hard for me because I'm gonna say no because I tell him everything. I tell him everything. Like we've been married for seven, eight years, right? And we have we sometimes here and there. He's always he's communicated with me because when the when the cheating was happening or the sexting and stuff, I was like, all right. So obviously there's something as a husband I'm not doing for you. So mm -hmm. what do I need to do for you? And he's like, well, you only have sex once every couple weeks. I'm like, well, that's all I can do. So <laughs> I. <laughs> <laughs> So what I did... I wasn't laughing at you. It was just funny the way you said it. <laughs> so what I did was I opened up... We made... It's kind of like a rental car. We, we, rent, we rent out our, our, our bedroom every couple, every couple weeks. And, you know, it's like getting a rental car. You, you go, you sign a contract, you understand what the rules are. But once you have that car, you can dog that car out, you can have fun with it. But at the end of the car time, you got to send it back to the rental car place. And you cannot drive that car again. That's his problem. I'm speaking of rental cars as in like another person. Oh, it's okay. a good reference. Thank you, because I, I was you, you so look, confused. You look kind of lost. I didn't know what was going on. But, 
But now that you and know, I was it, trying to look at Joe, and I didn't know. I mean, yeah, I knew it was an analogy, but I couldn't figure but out. But now that you know what I'm talking about, like for, for example, you go to you go to rent a rental car, you sign a contract saying. Once I'm driving this car, I can drive it like I was. But you know what? You don't treat it with respect. You mm -hmm. put the 87, not the 92 in it when you put it up in gas. Right. And then after you're done with it, you don't go back to that car. Yeah. His problem is he goes back, hey, yeah. how you doing? <laughs> that was in the past. Are I you too nice with the rental cars? In the past. <laughs> <laughs> In the past, I was too nice to run the cars. I put 89 instead of 87 in there, you know, just to right, 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 right. keep yeah, conversation going. Uh, to keep conversation <laughs> going. But uh, Do you go reuse that rental car after you've handed it in? Oh, no, I didn't. I never reuse the rental car. Um, I just would keep. You keep can go, up the tank. go drive by and then. Right, I'll drive by, keep pull a little gas in there, look at it a little bit, you know, uh, and keep driving. Um, but now the rental car knows that it's gonna get dogged out. It's gonna get, if it gets gas, it may get 87. Mm -hmm. It put some diesel in there, because it's cheaper. So they know what the rules yeah, are. Yeah, they know what the rules are. They, they actually read the contract, and everybody buys for the contract now. Yeah. I do believe <laughs> that it's one of the best analogies, even though I didn't understand it in the beginning. I think I'm gonna use it. I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, you two love each other. You two have a problem. I know what they are. I'm gonna tell you what I think you ought to do so you can save this marriage at the end of the day. What would you do if your partner's sex drive was lower than yours? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Chris, what Carlos wants from you is to be a grown man. That's all, that's all he wants. And, and, yeah. and, you know, it's easy to be lackadaisical when you have somebody who's on it. My man has been on it since he was 14, and he's tired. He's tired of being responsible. He's tired of having to, you know, being with somebody who will let the ball drop. Say, I got, you know, it's one thing knowing you got the ball and you're the only one with the ball and nobody else is, but you got a team member, you toss him the ball and you drop it. You, it, it makes it even that much worse. He wants to know that, we, that you'll take the ball and not drop it and not lie to him about what you're doing with the ball. He's tired. Give that man a break. You love him, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Step up your game. You know what I mean? Step up your game. He's not asking you to conquer the world. He's just asking you to pay a bill. He's asking you to handle what you're supposed to handle. Don't make him ask twice. Don't be casual because you can. Be, be conscientious because you love. There's a difference. Carlos, I understand your angle problem, but uh, it's hard to be somebody with somebody who's cranky all the time. You're a lovely person. I enjoy talking to you. Thank I you. like the story about the rental car. <laughs> <laughs> I did. But you can't be, I've always had a bad temper, so I'm gonna continue to have one. You need to be Carlos 2.0. You met me last year, nothing like the person I am this year, because whoever I was last year, I done up my game. Up your game for the brother over here. You like him, you love him. You yes, just, don't, yeah, don't drive over his ankle, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. So you grow up, you calm down, and then you live happily ever after. This matter is adjourned. What are you gonna do different now that you talk to the judge? I'll grow up more and start supporting you more with the house and with finances and with our business and make sure that you do know that I am here for you and not just dropping the ball and making you pick it up and rely on you for everything. And if you do that, I will I will do what the judge says. I will step my game up. I'll be Carlos 2.0 and I will try to be less angry um, and just try to be more happy and more nicer towards you as well and work on my anger. <laughs>